What you see behind me is a 75 horsepower Ingersoll Rand rotary screw style air compressor. One that you find in most decent sized manufacturing facilities. This baby cranks up to 125 pounds per square inch and over 300 cubic feet per minute. Powerful. What you can run with this baby is all air power tools on an assembly line or even manufacturing equipment. But what you might not be aware is the fact that this air can operate an industrial shop style vacuum. Not kidding. Let's take a look. Okay, now the air compressor that we just took a look at before will feed a manufacturing plant its air through a three inch main line. From there, each assembly line or area where the machinery is used is fed through a one inch pipe. From there, let's say we're running air operated tools, you will then attach a three eighths inch quick disconnect to operate the tool. Or, if it's an air vacuum, for example, you need a half inch quick disconnect. Okay, before we get into showing you the actual models in the air vacuum range, I think it's important to talk about the advantages of air versus electric. Everybody understands that you have an electric motor that creates a vacuum in an industrial shop vac. And um, in a typical uh, system, a 2.3 horsepower motor, for example, will deliver 105 inches of water lift and 110 CFM. Well, the biggest advantage that you're going to have in an air vacuum system is power, a dramatic amount of power. 180 inches of water lift and upwards to 160 CFM. Dramatic difference over electric. The second thing is virtually no maintenance. In an electric model, you'll have switches, you'll have electric motors, you'll have carbon brushes that need maintaining. In an air system, you have virtually no moving parts, no maintenance. Third, continuous duty. This, these air vacuums can run eight hours a day, seven days a week, just as long as you have an air supply. You can't do that with an electric powered unit. And lastly, let's talk about the debris an air operated vacuum system can collect. Anything from light duty debris, dust, compressed dust, all the way through heavy debris like steel shot or heavy viscosity oils. There are over 15 different models in the air vacuum lineup. Let's start with the smallest units and kind of work our way up to the larger ones. Starting with the six gallon unit. This is available in wet or dry configuration with or without a HEPA filter. And as we have it here, it's shown with the uh, optional wheel bracket. From there, we move to a 15 gallon unit. Again, it's available in wet or dry with or without a HEPA filter. From here, we move to the 55 gallon unit. Wet or dry, you can actually get a HEPA filter in this model as well. But one thing I want to point out is the intake. You'll notice that it's a horizontally mounted design, which will accept most debris and all liquids. However, when you start to get into debris that's a little bit more tricky, like metal shavings, for example, or windings from a milling machine, something that would have a tendency to clog in a horizontally mounted intake. We have the same air vacuum power, but in a vertically mounted intake. Now we're able to pick up that type of debris easily and efficiently. Let's say you need more power. Let's move into the dual valve unit. 180 inches of water lift is what's standard on all the vacuums, but the CFM changes. In the single valve units, we talked about 180 inches of water lift and 160 CFM. In the dual, we moved to 360 CFM. Very powerful. If you need even more power, we have a quad, a four Venturi unit, which will crank up to over 700 CFM. Lastly, we have our flammable liquid recovery system. This was designed specifically to pick up jet fuels, gasolines, Diesels, it's equipped with special features like intake closures, locking lid latches, totally grounded, relief valves. Now we all know how vacuum is created with an electric motor, but how are we creating a vacuum with these air units? Well, once we hook our airline up to the quick disconnect and open the flow of air, air rushes through this valve. 
and then exhausts out just as quickly. But in this center portion of the valve, a venturi is created. Tremendous amount of air compression and vacuum occurs. We take that vacuum, channel it through the intake, and voila, tremendous vacuum with no moving parts. So what's inside these vacuums? Let's talk about the filters for a second. In the 15 gallon and six gallon models, you're able to put on disposable bags, like you see right over here. This not only collects the debris, but it's an extra stage of filtration. This is standard in all of our vacuums, the 15 gallon units, six gallon units, 55 gallon units. Again, an extra stage of filtration, but required when you're picking up dusty debris. If it gets real fine, we recommend the filter protector. These fit around the cloth bag. Again, another stage of filtration. If we start to get into some really nasty environments where that dust is really fine, we then can switch to what we call a Tetra Tex filter bag, filtering to smaller micron sized particles. Yet we can take it one step further. If we're talking about hazardous material or really fine particulates that you want to contain and have absolutely zero exhaust out, HEPA filter. 0.3 microns, 99.97% efficiency. I'm going to demonstrate the uh, air vacuum system for you here in a minute, but there are three very important specifications that must be met in order for this vacuum system to work properly. I cannot overemphasize the importance of these three requirements. One, you must have the proper airline size. You can see right over here to my right, on the 701s and the 705 series air vacuums, they require a half inch airline. That's what this is. Unrestricted with high flow fittings. So there could be no restriction from the one inch pipe to the half inch drop. On the 702, the dual valve unit, you must have a three-quarter inch airline, no less, no restrictions. And on the 704, we need one size larger, a one inch airline with no restrictions. Number two, you must have the proper input pounds per square inch, input PSI, and it must be 100, no less. If it's more, we can put a regulator on the system but it can be no less than 100 PSI. Third, CFM, cubic feet per minute. The air compressor must give us 42 CFM for the 705 and 701 series vacuums. Must have all three of those in order for this to perform at the spec that we're calling out. Okay, so what do you say we fire this thing up? We've got our lid assembly, our fault mechanism, We have our half-inch airline already hooked up, ready to go. Seal it down. We have our inch and a half by 10 foot hose hooked up to our bulk pickup tube. I've got 50 gallons of water in this drum. What do you say we time it? How long is it going to take, do you think, for this 50 gallons to transfer to this 55 gallon drum? All right, you ready? Is that amazing or what?